Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, we're about to start another growing season. We have our first chicks of the year coming this week, and I thought this was a good time to kind of reacquaint you all with what our farm is all about, because the core of this channel has always been, to me anyway, how to make a living as a small farmer in a world where small farms have a tougher and tougher row to hoe. The best way to start is with a very brief introduction of our farm. Our farm is 45 acres. 30 of them are in pasture and grass. We have another 10 acre woodlot and the rest is in barns and houses. This land's been in my family for seven generations since 1804. I inherited it from my grandfather in 1977. Although Hillary and I didn't come back to work the land until 1995. Well, we started renovating the house in 1995 and we started farming in 2013. I was an architect for 20 years and was co-owner of a firm in Syracuse, which is about an hour north of here. And I came into this with two overriding things. And the first was I had business experience from running that business. I knew how to put spreadsheets together and figure out dollars and cents and profitability and be very deliberate about that. The second thing was that I had a specific philosophy that I wanted to bring to our farm because I had seen around us small farms like everywhere folding one after the other and I knew you needed a particular method of marketing and selling your product and growing your product to make it as a small farm when all of my neighbors pretty much around me were saying well you can't do it on 45 acres here you just can't make enough money to support a family I'm a contrary guy a lot of the time, so part of it was the challenge of setting out to prove folks wrong and to prove that common wisdom wrong. We came into this venture with some advantages that helped us along. I had inherited this land, so we had that, although there was almost nothing on it. And I had lived frugally for 20 years. My wife and I are both savers. I remember listening to Clark Howard and Dave Ramsey back in the day and viewing a debt-free lifestyle as the way to go. So when we came into this, we had no debt and we had a good amount of savings. But remember, we were patient. We did it the old fashioned way. We saved and saved. Instant gratification is just that, instant gratification, but not for the long term. We set out for the long term. And I'll tell you what, these cows sure do like instant gratification, but I'm not giving it to them right now. And as you probably know, if you've watched any of my videos, I am certainly not a faster, better, cheaper kind of guy. I like taking my time with things, and I like providing something meaningful for the community that takes a while. I call it the slow farming movement. Being a slow and deliberate person, when we started our farm, I created the ethics for how we farm in advance of almost everything else. The first ethic is that we're a family farm. We do all the labor here with our own family. I have no desire to grow any larger such that we would need to hire labor because once you hire labor, you have to run faster on the treadmill to both pay their labors and keep your profits. The second is that we don't carry any debt debt is such a drag we were in the position after saving for those decades to be debt free and i didn't want to go back into debt so whatever we do to expand our farm we pay for it with cash in hand third we use fully depreciated equipment i buy old junk and fix it up not only do i enjoy doing it but i also think it's the only way you can make a living on a small farm if i had to go out and buy a twenty thousand dollar piece of equipment every year that drops directly to what my family makes off the farm. I don't do it, I use old stuff. Yes, that old equipment is slower than the newer stuff, but you know what? I don't really care. Number four, we use adaptable and portable infrastructure whenever we can. Almost all of our fences here on the farm, with the exception of these permanent winter fences, are movable. They're just T-posts and wires. They're cheap to build. We can move them around as we change our practices to figure out the best way to use our land. And everything's portable, our feed wagons, our chicken tractors, everything moves around in this sort of dance all summer long. Oh geez, whenever the cows can see me, they start complaining because they see the grass greening up and they want to come out here, but they're not coming out yet. Number five, the dollar not spent is a dollar earned. We're frugal and we're thrifty and we limit our expenses because every dollar we spend takes away from our family's living. Number six, I'm a grass farmer. I can never forget that. Even though I grow livestock, every success on the farm has to do with how good I am at growing grass. And all these fields that you see around me, are multi-purpose, so depending on the stage of the grass and its growth cycle, we're either grazing any of our animals on that, including the pigs and the chickens and the turkeys, or we're taking hay off of it. This pasture here may be a pasture for the first 
few weeks of the growing season, and then I may save it for hay. And I can sometimes get a couple grazings and up to three cuttings of hay off of the same field, depending on the growing conditions. Principles number seven and eight are near and dear to my heart because they have to do with the, the plight of the small farm in today's world where bigger, faster, cheaper is kind of assumed to be better. And I know I work against the grain on that, but I think that all the local farms that used to be around and their ties to the community were so important and had a big influence on the cultural fabric of our nation as it developed and to see that leaving uh, and going to centralized farming is something I'm really sad about. So I'm out to preserve that. I'm out to make greater ties of local farms to communities so that people in the community know how and where their food was raised. And I'm also out to, to show people that food isn't just a commodity, that, you know, the way we're feeding our livestock on pasture and taking care of them as a small herd does make a difference in the quality of the meat. So when you go to the grocery store and you look at different cuts, they could be raised on farms that are halfway across the world or halfway across the US. With us, you know what you're getting and that's worth something. It's worth something more than something that is raised in the cheapest and quickest possible way. And I think there's a difference in the quality and the flavor of the product as well. The goal of this channel and all the varied videos I make all boils down to that one thing showing folks that are thinking about starting a small farm or have a small farm how to make a go of it and navigate a world that's kind of got a deck that's stacked against them so if i spend a while doing a tractor restoration or i go down a rabbit hole with like the solar power video these things are all tied together by that one goal how to make a living as a small farmer I know, I know, some people will look at a channel like ours that has nearly 100,000 subscribers and say, well, that's not a real farm. They're just a YouTube farm. Their primary job is to make money from YouTube and then they farm on the side. And that's not the case for us. The way that we've farmed hasn't changed in the two years since I started this YouTube channel. And we still make our living off of the farm. Being a frugal person, anything I make a YouTube goes into a rainy day fund, which so, it's something that always bothered me when we were just farming and I thought well what if something disastrous happens disastrous could be in, include you know a car breaks down and I can't fix it and I gotta buy a a new or a used car we didn't have a rainy day fund and now we do so I thank YouTube for that it hasn't changed our life otherwise although YouTube does provide a buffer for my family's financial well-being I'm leery of it I'm leery of all social media and maybe you can tell that with some of the comments that I make down below the videos. I don't want YouTube to ever take away from the way we farm and take me away from what I truly love which is the life we have here on the land and dealing with the animals and equipment and raising my family the way that I think is right. So I have to be careful sometimes not to let YouTube take over my life too much. Heck, I. I just returned to the Saturday farmer's market for the first time in four months yesterday. And it really brought me back to why I'm doing this. And it wasn't for a YouTube channel, it's to make a living for our family and interact with the community. As our channel has grown, it's natural for new viewers to say, well, why do you do this this way? Or why do you do that that way? Or why don't you have a bigger or newer this or that? And so I'm hoping that this video will answer some of these questions and bring you all up to speed on what we're about. Thanks for joining me. I hope this was informative and I'll see you next time.